For all the technology in here and the smarts that must go into it, you'd think that the Batman has a grasp of basic science. But alas, dear Gothamites, I'm here to tell you that the nuclear physics inside The Dark Knight Rises is about as bad as the Joker's nurse disguise. Here's why. Seriously, no one clocked the guy with the clown face paint going into the restricted area? Nobody? All right, here we go. Now entering the facility. In The Dark Knight Rises, what matters is Bane's plan. And his plan is to hijack a fusion reactor and then use a scientist to turn that fusion reactor into a four megaton thermonuclear bomb. R.I.P. by the way. Then Bane has his men truck that fusion reactor across the city because it will decay over time and then explode. So, The Dark Knight Rises poses two questions. One, can you weaponize a fusion reactor and make it explode? And two, if it does explode, can Batman save Gotham from it? Because I'm not so sure. First of all, <clears throat> Sorry. First of all, what is a fusion reactor? Well, simply put, it's a machine that makes heavier elements from lighter ones. They use energy to force the less stable atoms like heavy hydrogen into one more stable atom like helium. The increased stability expresses itself as a loss of mass and expulsion of energy. This reaction is the first step in making a fusion reactor work, and it's where we've gotten to so far. Where we haven't gotten to yet is possibly the even bigger challenge of capturing the energy released during fusion and using that heat to boil water, turn turbines, and make electricity. Apparently, Wayne Enterprises figured out both problems. Unfortunately, this is where the many problems in Batman begins. That was a terrible pun. Oh, hey, thanks, Arya. Activate Alfred mode, please. I think that that was a brilliant pun, Master Kyle. That's better. Thank you, Alfred. You know what? I'm gonna put the mask back on. I don't even care. The problems start right here. Look at my reactor. Look at how big and beefy it is. Now look at what the National Ignition Facility uses, or ITS design. They're absolutely ginormous machines. Now look at Batman's. It's impossibly tiny. There's literally not enough surface area for proper heat transfer and energy production. There's no shielding for neutron bombardment. And what is this arch thingy? No idea. Okay, so maybe Hollywood just made something that's typically quite big very small, so it's cool, right? Well, the biggest problem here is that Christopher Nolan doesn't seem to know what nuclear fusion actually is. Great impression, and you are looking quite beefy today, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Alfred. I do say that I'm feeling quite hardy today. <laughs> Deal with it. Today's episode is sponsored by Radiocode. Gamers, I'm award-winning science educator and the guy trying to put rad in radiation. Kyle Hill. You know, the more nuclear videos we do like this one, the more I hear from you that you too want to explore the world of the invisible. Well, I've got great news. I have the perfect entry point for your budding nuclear enthusiasm. The official Geiger counter sponsor of the facility, Radiocode. Radiocode makes pocket-sized radiation detectors and spectrometers, engineered specifically for science enthusiasts like you and me. These aren't just simple ionization event counters either. Not only will it tell you dose rates and counts, its built-in spectrometer will visualize and show the data for observed isotopes. When you're serious about the science, it's important to know not just that something is radioactive, but what is radioactive. And my hot new Radiocode 110 can do this 250% faster than other similar devices. That's why Radiocodes are consistently rated so highly among nuclear enthusiasts. And if you really want to dig into that enthusiasm, Radiocode has a free mobile and desktop app that integrates seamlessly with smartphones. Something that I've been using my radio codes for is to identify and study old radioactive products like Fiesta Ware. I brought this little ceramic plate home with me after speaking at the American Nuclear Society just a few weeks ago. And as you can see, they used to make these with uh, 
real uranium glaze. If you're watching this video, you're probably just the kind of person Radio Code makes these sleek devices for. Go to the link in the description and or the comments, use my code KYLE, and get 10% off right now. Take it from me, whipping out a Geiger counter at some social function is literally one of the coolest things that you can possibly do. Watch this. <laughs> oh, what's that you say? Oh, this is my Geiger counter. Let's me visualize the world of the invisible. And have you noticed this extension rod exclusive to their products? It really puts the distance in time distance shielding. <laughs> Radio code. Counts per minute? More like count me in. <laughs> Here, watch this. This is a free one. You can use this one. Oh. It says you're pretty hot. It makes sense that Wayne Enterprises wants to be at the center of fusion technology. Nuclear fusion is like nuclear fission, except it doesn't produce any nuclear waste and it's many times more powerful. Realized commercial fusion power effectively means unlimited energy for everyone. However, in The Dark Knight Rises, this includes a drawback. It's that the reactor itself is both unstable and weaponizable. Both of these are about as wrong as what Arnold thinks happened to the dinosaurs. I mean, come on, when the movie came out, everybody knew about the media. It's, it's crazy that he thinks that. Nuclear fission, in a way, is passive. All you have to do is orient some spicy rocks next to each other in the right way, and they will sustain a chain reaction all by themselves. Fusion, on the other hand, is active. You have to actively force atoms together to get energy out. Use a lot of energy from lasers and magnetic fields. If this active process stops, therefore, the reaction stops. It wants to shut down. The atoms don't want to come together. Practically speaking, then, it is extremely difficult, if not flat out impossible, to hijack and weaponize a fusion reactor, especially when you disconnect it from its apparent power source. And when the movie says the unconnected reactor will decay and then explode, what's decaying? Well, nothing. Like we said, the reaction stops, and left alone, fusion fuel, tritium, decays into helium. You know the stuff in party balloons? That means no potential explosion and no radioactive signature that Gordon has to track through lead-lined walls. I honestly think what happened here is that someone in production confused nuclear fission with nuclear fusion, and then even further confused nuclear meltdowns with a nuclear explosion. It's kind of baffling for a sciencey movie maker to get basic facts so wrong. You're telling me Christopher Nolan can consult with a guy who won a bet against Stephen Hawking but can't talk to one person for fusion? <sighs> Sorry. It's just that nuclear misinformation is the bane of my existence. I wish I could be more technical about this for you, but The Dark Knight Rises flat out gets nuclear fusion reactors wrong. And interestingly, Christopher Nolan's brother, Jonathan Nolan, also then went on to get nuclear fusion wrong, specifically cold fusion, in the Fallout TV show. Maybe it's a family thing. But since we're here and we're nerds, let's ask the question. Could Batman actually save Gotham from a four megaton thermonuclear bomb? Well, to the Bat computer! That is caught. To the Kyle computer! <laughs> to figure this out, we really only need three numbers and some basic math. One, the top speed of Batman's bat rotor clamshell looking thing. Two, the amount of time that Batman flies at that top speed. And three, the radius of the destructive effects of a four megaton nuclear bomb. The first number we are gonna base on real life machines because like Terrence Howard, movies are not consistent with time and space. The fastest helicopter ever produced has a top speed of around 300 miles per hour. In the film, Batman has around one minute to fly at that speed because he spends a full minute yapping about his true identity or being an orphan or something. I don't know. This gives him a maximum bomb towing range of just five miles, which is less than the movie's stated six mile radius of the blast. Oops. So let's try something else. Gotham is basically New York City, right? I'm gonna go to Nuke Map and drag the blast site to two miles or 3.4 kilometers out to where Batman should be after flying at 300 miles per hour for 10 seconds, which is the amount of time after he clears the entrance of the bay. 
Then we're going to set the blast to 4 megatons. And I don't know if I said this yet, but that is enormously powerful. I'm also going to set it to air burst because Batman is flying. Make sure we check for casualties from blast and burn and radiation damage to onlookers. And the end of the Dark Knight should actually look like... 238,000 people dead and 2.4 million people wounded. All of these people watching have third degree burns and or are blind. And Batman is 100% turned into bat atoms as the fireball for this blast alone is over a mile wide. So, almost all of the nuclear physics in the Dark Knight Rises is wrong. The fusion reactor's too small, and it can't explode. And even if it could explode, it would have taken Batman and most of Gotham with it. So, if you were a movie nerd like me and you were confused while watching this great film, don't worry. You won't, uh, you weren't alone with me in the darkness where I was born. Until next time. Shall I prepare your protein shake, sir? Yes, I'll take a protein shake, Alfred. Thank you. You know, you can't spell gains without banes. <sighs> now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff here at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white cape and cowl that also functions as a lab coat, if you want to see behind the scenes photos and videos, if you want to join a private Discord to talk with me 24-7, if you want private members only live streams every month, go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join us all today. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name stamped, bat stamped, into every single video. And as you can see, there's so, there's so many of you. I don't know how I'm gonna pass the, there's one other thing that will prevent Batman from escaping the vicinity of that blast if he was so close. And that's the well-known magnetic pulse, the electromagnetic pulse that comes after a nuclear bomb goes off. This induces currents in things that are conductive. And so it acts to fry sensitive electronics like might be in a rotor bat, thing. So even if he escaped the thermal and blast and radiative effects, he probably would have had his bat rotor thing inactivated and then he sinks into the bay. And so he can't meet anyone else at a restaurant and go like this. Thanks for watching.